Okay, we're solving rational equations. The easiest thing for you to do, if you can get all of your denominators to match, you actually kind of get to ignore those denominators for a minute. So watch this for a second. Let me just do a simpler one. If I told you, if I gave you an equation that was something like 2 fifths plus x over 5 equals, I don't know, 3 fifths. What does x have to be to make this true? 1, right? 2 fifths plus 1 fifth would get me 3 fifths, right? Do we all agree? Does anything change if you just ignore the denominators? 2 plus what gets me 3? It's still 1, right? So if all the denominators match, that's why you kind of get to just ignore them. And you're going to solve the equation just formed by the numerator. The only thing that you have to worry about is you just need to make sure that whatever answer you get doesn't then, if you plug it back in, you can't end up with a 0 in a denominator. Otherwise, again, there's an extraneous solution. Sometimes uh, they're referred to as excluded values. Okay, so if I'm looking at number 17, for example, the only number that P could be f to get a, a zero in the denominator in this case would be zero. So zero would be an excluded value. If that ends up being my answer, I'd have to throw it out. If I look at 18, zero, if I got 0 as an answer, it would actually be fine. It wouldn't turn any of these denominators into 0. But what would? 2. So positive 2 would be an excluded value because it would turn both of these. It only has to turn one denominator into a 0 because I can't have it anywhere. But this one would just so happen to turn both of these into a 0. And I'm sure there's probably two values here that would turn that into a 0 also. So I don't know what they are right now, but those would be excluded values also. Does that make sense? So that's really the only thing that you have to worry about with the denominators once you get them all the same. So get them all the same, ignore them, solve your equation, and then just make sure that that answer doesn't leave you with a zero downstairs, okay? So if I look back at 17, in order to get all of these denominators the same, we're pretty lucky because these two already match. This one would just need to be multiplied by two over two. Does that make sense? So now I can literally ignore the denominators for a second and I'm just going to solve that. Well, that's a whole lot easier than what is, appears on this paper, right? So that's just P minus three equals six. So I get nine. Did you? Good, and nine does not turn any denominators into a zero, so I'm fine. Yep. Oh yeah, you can if you want. Mm -hmm. Did you guys hear what she said? She said you could multiply everything by the common denominator. Totally fine. So let's look at 18. All right, so, huh. This one does not have common denominators from the jump. Too bad, so sad. Any thoughts? Go ahead, what would you do? Exactly, let's try and factor this thing. And let's hope that one of its factors is n minus two. Does anybody have it factored already? Is it n minus two? All right. So now I can pretty easily get those common denominators if I just multiply these guys by the 5n minus 1 over 5n minus 1. Or you can multiply everybody by 5n minus 1 times n minus 2. Same thing. So let's see. I'm going to multiply you by 5n minus 1. And same thing over here. And now, temporarily, I get to ignore those denominators altogether and just solve the equation in the numerator.
Do, do we agree? Have I got what I got? So then I just stop and I say to myself, okay, let me just make sure that 7 fourths doesn't create any zeros in my denominators. But it looks like it's fine because the only thing that would would be a positive 2 or a what? A 1 -fifth. Yeah, if I had 1 -fifth as an answer, I'd have to throw it away because it would make that guy turn into a 0. All right, so we remember rational equations too? Gosh. I'm impressed with you guys, I must say. All right, so uh, I have a sheet that I want to give you. Well, let's stop this video.